It's all quiet inside Ellen Road at the moment, but it won't be for long. Wolves are the visitors. Leeds are back in Premier League action, and this is the warm up. <laughs> Coming up for you this week. I, I prefer to play with a full arrow than empty around. The one thing he does, he puts bums on the seats, doesn't he? I'm Jamie, Razor Sharp, Shackleton. So welcome to the warm-up with myself, Rich Williams, and of course, Don Matteo here as always. Don, how are you doing? Very well, Rich, yourself? Good, good, thank you. Uh, it's called the warm-up, but we've, uh, we've underestimated how cold it is <laughs> and gone for thinner jackets <laughs> we have. than we probably should have done. Um, exciting though, this place is going to be full soon, and walls yes. of the visitors back into action, hopefully getting a win. Most definitely. Um, let's think positive. We've got, um, they're all big games, let's be honest. So it's another big one for us. Another game is another opportunity for us to get three points. And like you said, we need to be positive now. We've had some negativity around us, but now let's be positive. Let's try and get this win and get the three points in the bag. Of course, uh, last time Leeds were playing here, they did get those three points against Watford. Since then, it's been the long trip down south. And what you don't want after a long trip, presumably on the coach on the way back, Dom, and you know what this is like. I do. It's a long journey back after a defeat, but that's what the players will have had. Yeah, it's true. And uh, I think from my point of view personally, I think what the players have to do is you've had a bad result. You've got to move forward very quickly. And I think sometimes when I was younger, I found that hard, but now I think you've got to be more realistic about the games you're, you're, the, the, your opposition you're up against and think, try and maybe, I know you want to win every game, but there's certain games that I think you, you target as a player or as a coach or as a manager, whatever you want to call it, and that's what I think Leeds need to do a little bit better. Yeah, looking to that Southampton game, uh, what, one of those days really, I guess, are possibly the best way to reflect on it is really in the words of Marcelo and Liam Cooper, and what they said about it. Marcelo said it was a fair result. Uh, he said, yes, we were missing players, we're missing a lot of players, yeah. but that happens throughout a season and you can't blame that. No, you're right, you can't blame that. And uh, I think the players who got the opportunities, did they do well enough? Probably not, being honest, but I think there was some, you had to make some changes, some late changes at times, but you have to do with the football club. And that maybe threw us a little bit. Uh, even the formation, a little bit, the way we played, it was a 3-3-3-1, which is uh, another new formation to me, to be honest. But uh, like you say, we've got to try and take some positives out of it. Dan James was decent. He tried to get forward at every opportunity. But again, that's something we need to get better at, is getting better in that final third. Uh, Post-match, Liam Cooper, uh, of course, saying it was a disappointing performance, but also said, as you want to hear, really, is about learning from that performance and taking those lessons into the next game. What will the lessons be from that performance? Um, I think defensively we weren't too bad, you know, and I think Coops is right to, to, to say what he said. I think it's small improvements all the time in life and as, as a player, and I think we have to get better at that. And I think don't be so critical on yourself at times as a player, because we are, and I was, and we all are, and obviously Coops speaking out so honestly, he's the captain, he's the leader. So I think it's about other people taking responsibility as well, not just Coops. He's the one who stands up as the captain and says what he has to say, but all of us as a club, as a team, have to stick, to te stick together and get back to what we were doing well. Uh, Tony Dorigo was saying this week, sometimes when you have a defeat like that, sometimes it's good to just step away and have a day away from it before you get back to it. What did you prefer? Did you prefer getting straight back onto the training pitch and just let's work straight away on what we did? Or did you think, right, we all just need a breather and then we'll go at it again? I think from my point of view, from my era, we'd have a get together, a few of the boys, and we'd have a chat. How can we improve things? And you maybe speak to your senior players and chat with the manager. We've done that. I did that with David O'Leary. Um, spoke with Eddie Gray lots of times about stuff like that maybe go out for a couple of beers. I know it's a different era, but that's what we did. And sometimes that's, we can sort a few things out. I'm, not, I'm obviously not telling the players to go and have a few beers because that wouldn't be right. But sometimes for us, that was the way we dealt with stuff. And it managed us to get a little, it managed to ignite something that we didn't have, we lost for a while. So we need to get back to that way again for Leeds United because we know we can play good football. We know what we can do well, it's just we need to keep doing it more regular and we need to be better at it week in, week out. Hopefully we'll be seeing a, a bit more of that against uh, Wolves uh, as well. We're going to preview that in full, of course. We'll hear from Matthias Click uh, coming up as well. But before we do that, let's just take a look at the Premier League uh, as a whole this weekend. There's some great fixtures and the one that really stands out, your old team as well, going to Old Trafford, Manchester United at home to Liverpool in the Sunday game. Yeah. I mean, where do you see that one going? It's, it's mouth-watering, isn't it? You know, I don't like talking about Man United too much, but I'm going to. Um, no, I think obviously they've had a, a decent result in the Champions League in the end as well. Um, and so have Liverpool. Two 3 2s. 
So uh, I think it'll be an interesting game, one that could probably go either way. I think Liverpool are probably ahead of, in the pecking order for me. I think Liverpool are probably favourites. Uh, and that's not me being biased whatsoever, because obviously I'm all Leeds. The thing, the thing I see about that game is Solskjaer, for me, is on a knife edge really, isn't he? Um, he needs to get results quick. Um, so I'm sure the players will want to do that for him. And from the other side of it, Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp, you know how he likes to play on the front foot. So they'll want to start well, start quick. And I think if they do start well and quick, they will beat Man United. Uh, just very quickly on that, Jurgen Klopp says Mohamed Salah is the best player in the world right now. Is he right? I agree. Yeah, I think he's um, some player. You know, the goals he scores and the amount of goals he scored is ridiculous. But he's all, he also puts a shift in for his team as well. That's what he doesn't get talked about as much. He puts so much effort into what he, get, into what he gets. And, and to be honest, that's what he deserves. When you, when you put that much effort in that he does, he deserves them goals because he gets himself into the right areas constantly. And that takes hard work. Uh, lots going on around Leeds United this week. In fact, this weekend, uh, Leeds United women are in action in the FA Cup. They're away to Redcar, and we've been catching up with some of the squad to get their thoughts on the season so far. You want to do well in the FA Cup. Um, so to go and, and do that as a team and, and win a trophy, that's all you want to do uh, coming into a season. So to play like a team like Redcar, um, go and enjoy ourselves, hopefully get a couple of goals um, and just keep the magic of the FA Cup going. They're in a lower division, but that doesn't mean that we're going to go out there and beat them. So we're going to have to... Because sometimes they're the harder games, the lower teams, like it's a different pitch, never been there before. Um, so yeah, we're going to go out there and we're not going to be like, I think it's going to be easy because it's, it's not. So Matthias Click joins us on the warm up. Thanks so much for doing so. Matthias, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Matthias, Don Matteo here. Nice to get you on, mate. Just wondering, what can we actually take out of that performance? I know it was a disappointing result for you. And for, the, and for the fans, but what can we get out of that now? And how, how do we improve as a team? Yeah, it was a bad game, we were poor. And uh, the only positive is probably we can't, we can't play worse than this. So uh, that's, that's the worst game of the season behind us, I think, I hope. Mateus, um, how would you assess your start to the season this year? It was, it was difficult, I would say. And uh, the games weren't easy. We had a, a tough opponents in the beginning of the season. and. Um, it wasn't start like last year. Uh, we we started as I, can I say poorly because uh, we won only one game in, in eight games. So uh, obviously for me, I started. So we lost the first game. Then I scored a goal and second, and then I got COVID again. I couldn't go with the national team. I couldn't play against Burnley and, and Liverpool. I was back, but after after COVID, so it wasn't a perfect start, but. Uh, as I said, uh, you can only get better from now on, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we're gonna we're gonna get more points because it, all it matters at the end. I'm guessing one of the highlights of the season so far: first game back here in the Premier League with a full house against Everton, and you got that first goal in front of a crowd that just went crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was very, very good, very good goal and very important goal for us as well, and. Mm, I like to score the first goals in the, the first goal with Marcelo against Stoke. Uh, uh, that's my first goal against Liverpool last season, in the first game as well, and first game with the fans, I scored again. So um, I think I'm good in the first first games. Just wondering what you think if you got the first goal in this game, and also how much of an impact do the fans have on you guys as players? Obviously, Ellen Road. Uh, it's our home, and we. I pref I prefer to play with a full arrow than an empty all around, and um, I think they, they they will help us, and I hope they they will want to help us. Uh, let's see, but I like the pressure, and I like to see the people are there, and they expect us to win because it it, it motivates you uh, even more. So um, I expect a good game from us because, as I said, we can't really play worse. And of course, on to this game against Wolves, uh, narrowly beat us twice last season, so hopefully uh, looking to do one over on them. What kind of challenge do they pose? What kind of team do you think they are? Uh, yeah, they are very tough to beat. They uh, defend well and they got plenty, a lot of people uh, at, the, at the back and defending over the, with the whole team. And obviously the front three is very dangerous. So uh, there's no easy games in, in Premier League. Uh, then I think Wolves is one of, the, one of the toughest because as I said, they 
our um, organization and the, the way they play, they 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 tough to beat and they tough to score goals against. And we're struggling lately lately with uh, creating chances, but um, I hope we we create enough and we we'll score goals. Mateus, thanks so much for joining us on the warm up. Thank you. So Dom, let's turn our attentions then to the three o'clock kickoff, Leeds United against Wolves. Uh, it was one of those things at the Southampton match. I'm watching. I'm thinking. Oh, okay, we're not going to win this game, but uh, Wolves are losing, yeah. uh, so they're going to they're going to be gutted losing a big derby, and then yeah. they turned it round in spectacular fashion. Twenty minutes to go in that game, and they get the three goals. Incredible. Um, I think, as we've mentioned, those guys, it's what you want as a fan, is it, to come back and, and win, being two 0 down, coming back and winning is incredible. Uh, especially in the Premier League, it gets much tougher nowadays to do that. But I think with Wolves, what we what we see is an identity now. Even though they've changed manager, they're still trying to play the same way. They've got some clever footballers. They've got some pace in their team. People can score goals and make chances. That's what they weren't doing so well in the first part of the season. But now they seem to be creating chances. You know, people like Traore is going to be a threat. Jimenez, obviously, he was out, um, but came came on. I think did he? But obviously, a great player. Great goal scorer, but this year the goals haven't really happened for him. But he's another player we've got to watch out. So Wolves are a team that, if you look at look throughout the squad, there's some clever players with some with, with some good uh, good talent as well. Uh, we now are going to defender Connor Cody. As he yeah. actually said post match after Villa, they've been working on set pieces yeah. a lot. A couple of defenders got goals in that game. In fact, the one moment in that game. Connor Cody let a ball go out for a corner rather than keeping the attack going because they fancied their chances. Yeah. So that will be a big threat. You're right, and I think it's good to mention Connor Cody because he's a bit of an unsung hero. Didn't really quite work out from at Liverpool. Goes to Wolves. Everyone loves him now. He's like a bit of a folk hero, isn't he now? Which he deserves. Good lad. Understands football really well. I must emphasise that he's a very clever, clever manager, uh, player manager. Well, he wants that. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> but yeah, he, I think he's so important and so crucial for the team because he's, he's a voice, he's a leader. Well, they're certainly going to have something to think about uh, along with the other defenders, which is that Rafinha's back, uh, of yes. course, after his exploits with Brazil doing so amazingly. Had yeah. to sit out the Southampton game. It was too soon for him, but he's back in front of a crowd here who have loved watching his every move since being back in the stadium. And I think we all have. I think... Uh, I, uh, generally, for me, my, for my point of view, he's the one player we all want to go and watch and, and see play. Um, and for me, that's unusual because I always pick out the defenders. But it's nice to pick out a striker attacking as well. And I think the one the one thing he does, he puts bums on seats. Don't he? The players, play, the fans, and, and the players even like to watch him because he's so good. He he seems like he's another notch. And I, I don't mean that in a disrespect to any other players. He feel he, I think he could play anywhere. For anyone, obviously, we've got him at Leeds United and we've got to really embrace that because he is so good and so talented. The world is his oyster, it really is. He's a, he's a great player. He seems like a really, he's got a really good attitude as well. I'm sure if you'd asked him, he'd either want to have played in that game that he missed it you know, in the Southampton game, but he didn't because obviously he, did, he didn't have enough time to recover. But I think he's just such a great footballer, clever as well, and one that I'm certainly looking forward to watch as the season progresses. I think that's called the Don Matteo seal of approval. I think that's <laughs> well, what that's... If, if that means anything to anyone. But I generally do think as well, because the one thing I love about him as well, and you don't see it with all the top stories, he works his socks off as well for the team. He gets up and down. Maybe, he can, can he do a bit more of that? Yeah, because he's, he's that kind of striker. But sometimes, for me, I love seeing that work rate in a player who's got so much ability. OK, um, more to come on the warm-up before we crack on. Luke Ayling has been clinging on to top spot in our nine darts challenge, but maybe Jamie Shackleton can make it to the top spot. I'm Jamie, Razor Sharp Shackleton, and this is the nine dart challenge. The bad start is what it is. So that brings us to the end of this week's warm up. Just uh, very quickly, uh, what's the key thing? Is it going to be a packed house? Is it a case of starting well, putting them under pressure, and seeing where it goes from there? Most definitely. I think starting well is so important. There's been certain games this year we haven't started well and it's cost us. But I think, I think today's game 
is so important. Start well, do things right, do the basics well. And also in China, enjoy it as well. I think sometimes when I see the players at the moment, they don't like them enjoying it too much. And that's massively important to do that. So go out there, do your best and enjoy it. Score prediction from you, Dom? I fancy it's 2-1. OK, and of course a big week as well with the Arsenal game yeah. coming up. 2-1, then we can start booking our tickets for Wembley. That'd it all starts nice. today, right? Yeah, most definitely. And I'm looking forward to that. I'll be there myself. OK, um, enjoy the match. Leeds United taking on Wolves. Your commentary team on LUTV will be Bryn Law and Tony DeRigo.